Hey, happy Friday. This week I got super angry, just furious about HMD Global, the company that runs the Nokia phone business. And I will also talk about all the brand new chips that Qualcomm has announced and whether you should be excited about them or not. Our technology quiz once again has 20 brand new questions. So if you enjoy testing yourself, that's linked down in the description and welcome to the Friday checkout. <music> Okay, once again, a slow week for new releases, and the only ones that I would highlight are the Honor 60 and 60 Pro launching in China with a new Snapdragon 778G Plus chip, a weird launch since the almost identical Honor 50 just came out a few months ago. And then we have the new matte black versions of the Nothing Ear One earbuds. I think these look really pretty, though I find it weird that they didn't announce them on, you know, Black Friday or before. They are black, of course, and everyone who wanted an earbuds had just bought there, so yeah. Anyway, to see all of the new releases of the week together with their details, head to the release monitor in the crowd app that is linked down in the description. Okay, and my first story of the week will actually be a personal rant directed at HMD Global that was triggered by this infuriating piece of news. So they have just announced that after two full years of empty promises, the Nokia 9 PureView will not be receiving an Android 11 update after all. Mind you, that's not Android 12, but Android 11, meaning that their only flagship phone from the last few years will be stuck with one upgrade on Android 10, even though their whole selling point was two upgrades. They blame all of this on Lite getting out of the phone business, that is the company that helped them make the five camera system on the back of the Nokia 9 PureView, and they say that updating that system without support to a new Android version would be difficult. But don't worry, as a compensation, Nokia 9 owners will get a 50% discount on a random rugged mid-range Nokia phone. And you know what? I hate everything about this. First, Lite cancelled their mobile business at least a year and a half ago, so none of this is a sudden surprise, and every company has or should have mandatory support contracts with their key suppliers. So this shouldn't be a hard limit either. Nokia was either incompetent or has just decided they just rather not spend the money on doing the difficult update and just walked away with it. Second, a discount is not a real compensation for anything, because I'd have to spend even more money and give that to Nokia so that I could get a product that I don't actually want in order to take advantage of it. And this product is aimed at pro photographers. It's a, supposed to be a premium product. So offering a discount on a mid-range rugged phone, obviously not a whole lot of people are going to take Nokia up on that. So this is like offering a solution that nobody's going to take. So it's not actually going to cost Nokia anything. If Nokia paid me back half the price of this phone that they have abandoned, that might be compensation. Though now that I think about it, the fingerprint reader still doesn't work half the time, the camera still takes like 20 seconds to process a single photo, and you're still stuck with Android 10 from two years ago when the entire selling point of the phone was fast updates and a good camera. So actually what would be fair is if HMD paid back something like, let me think about it, a hundred percent of the price. That would feel fair. And annoyingly, if HMD knew at launch that this phone would be a disaster, which they had to know, it was such an incredibly buggy phone that it did stuff like letting people unlock it using a piece of chewing gum, then the responsible thing would have been to cancel it at launch in the first place, which they didn't do. Then once they had released it, the responsible thing would have been to spend resources on improving it to make up for their mistakes, which they also didn't do. And once they broke broke their explicit update promise, the last responsible thing would have been to offer any sort of real compensation, which again, they didn't do. There were so many steps along the way with this device where HMD could have done the right thing, but with each one they chose to just screw over the consumer. So I will never buy a phone from HMD again, and I will never recommend one to anyone else either. Anyway, on to regular tech news, I guess. And for story number two, we'll be talking about all the brand new chips that Qualcomm has just announced. 
We're starting with their brand new flagship mobile SoC that is now called the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. There is a new naming scheme, obviously, and at the conference, Qualcomm mostly focused on stuff like AI, photography, gaming, and connectivity relating to the chip instead of hyping up the core CPU or the GPU, and it's not hard to see why. The CPU and the GPU are pretty much just direct iterations on last year's designs, and nothing crazy really happened with them. The CPU will be made on a new 4 nanometer process built by Samsung Foundry again, just like last year's chip, and the newer process should deliver a 16% efficiency improvement. The CPU also once again has a 1 plus 3 plus 4 core count design, like last year, so one high performance Cortex X2 core running at 3 GHz, plus a bunch of lower end cores like usual, and Qualcomm is claiming 20% faster performance and 30% power savings overall. And not only is that iterative, it is also almost the exact same thing as the MediaTek Dimensity 9000 that was just announced, which has the same 1 plus 3 plus 4 layout, also with the X2 core, though theirs is clocked slightly higher at 3.05 GHz, and their chip is made on TSMC's 4 nanometer node instead of Samsung's, so on paper it could theoretically be just slightly more performant than the Snapdragon. On the GPU front, the Adreno GPU is now strangely unnumbered, but also seems like an expected iteration as it offers 30% faster rendering performance while consuming 25% less power with new features such as volumetric rendering that should more easily enable adding elements like fog for more realistic gaming. And since Qualcomm uses a custom GPU it's kind of harder to compare that against MediaTek solutions so we'll just have to wait and see how those two stack up but yeah overall CPU and GPU they're fine they're nice little updates but they're iterative. Instead much more important important to Qualcomm was apparently that its 5G modem can now hit 10 gigabits per second download speeds, which definitely puts it ahead of MediaTek, but like, who cares? <laughs> and also its camera improvements. There is now 18-bit image signal processing, for example, up from the 14 bits in the Snapdragon 888, which should mean higher data rates and the ability to process data from up to three 36 megapixel cameras simultaneously without any shutter lag, better dynamic range and better night mode shots. And Qualcomm, for some reason, also felt the need to make an always-on camera experience. This means that phone makers will be given the option to just basically let a camera run all the time in the background without any significant impact on battery, which should allow them to do things like always on facial recognition. And maybe no, like my perspective is just because we can, doesn't mean we have to, doesn't mean we should. This sounds like a feature that we should just sit out. Like maybe always on cameras in our pockets all the time, it, it doesn't sound like the right thing to do. Anyway, this is a feature that MediaTek doesn't have yet, but they do have a new 18-bit HDR ISP in their Dimensity 9000 as well, just like Qualcomm, and they have a massively revamped camera system too, so we'll have to see how the two stack up. Xiaomi is saying that it will have the first phone with the new 8 Gen 1 as part of the Xiaomi 12 series within a few weeks, by the way, and Realme says it will be next in line, while all rumors point to Samsung moving more of their phones over to Exynos this year, since industry sources claim that they have substantially solved their heating issues. If that is true, that will be huge news. Fingers crossed. Okay, and my last story this week will be all the other chips Qualcomm has announced, starting with their Windows line. First, there is a new 8CX Gen 3 that now runs on a 5 nanometer process and comes with, quote, up to 85% better CPU performance and up to 60% faster GPU performance. That is a significantly bigger performance jump than what we've seen on phones, though probably not enough to catch up with Apple's M1 chips yet. That is promised for the next generation, when Qualcomm's new via acquisition should finally hopefully start paying dividends. Then we have the mid-range Snapdragon 7C plus Gen 3 kill me, why do they have such long names? Anyway, this one again seems like a fairly big improvement over a honestly fairly unimpressive last generation. This is aimed at Chromebooks and cheaper PCs, and it remains on a 6 nanometer process, but it will now get 5G capabilities. And finally, there's also the Snapdragon... 
G3X Gen 1, I still hate these names, and this is a dedicated chip designed for gaming that was announced together with a Razer developer kit. We don't actually know much about its performance, but Qualcomm did say it was for Android only for now, and it was also said as being, quote, built for cloud gaming, so likely not a direct Nintendo Switch competitor. That Razer development kit is apparently not available for regular consumers to buy, even though it looks kind of cool, and my guess for this chip would be that it either goes into sort of Android gaming phones like the Asus ROG series as a way to differentiate them from the rest of the Android ecosystem, or into a whole new category of handheld dedicated Android devices. That's my guess. I've made a dedicated in-depth video breaking down the business model of Qualcomm, their insanely anti-competitive history, and what they have planned for the future over on my main channel, so if you haven't seen that video yet, I recommend checking out over here or linked in the description. Alright, thanks for watching, subscribe if you haven't yet, take the quiz if you enjoy quizzing, and I'll see you next Friday.